Hey loves, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Esther and on this channel, I do sewing, fashion and DIY videos. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this top and it was sent to me by a subscriber to my Instagram and the designer or the maker of the original corset is on Instagram as... And it is inspired by the 18th century corsetry this type of corsetry was worn a lot in the 17th and 18th century by women as undergarments but as fashion trends have changed it is worn a lot today as an outer garment so if this is something you would like to know how to make then let's get right into today's video So a subscriber asked if I could make a modesty panel and yes, I'm going to do that. So if you want to see it, you have to watch to the end of this video. So I already did the bust circle and then I'll close the shoulder dart. But first I would cut through the center of the waist dart to ease up the pattern when I close the shoulder dart. So I would then hold the dart in place with my adhesive tape and at the waist dart on the bicycle, I went out half an inch on both sides. This is to contour the underbust area to give it a snug fit. Then I went in half an inch on the side and then at the center front, I made a center line and went out quarter of an inch on both sides on the neckline I went out half of an inch because the fabric is a bit stretchy so this is to make it not gape so much and then at the armhole I went out quarter of an inch after this I would close all my contour lines by cutting through it and holding it in place with my adhesive tape as usual if you are new to my channel i would put a link up here for you to see what is going on this is pattern contrary if you are already a subscriber i believe you already know a little bit about this So now I'm shaping the neckline. I made a line through the center of the shoulder and then just curving your neckline as you want. And then at the armhole area, I went down one inch and then I went ahead and make more panels for the top because it's a corset top and it has a lot of panels. But it's up to you to decide how many panels you want to put in your top. So I put in four panels at the front and at the bust area, I'm going to cut through the dart over there. So yeah, I'm labeling my panels and putting in notches. And at the shoulder, it drops about two and a half inches down you can even go as low or as high as you want so now my front pattern is ready i'm just cutting everything out but i still have to do one thing at the lower side at the waist area so around the bust area i'm just smoothing up the pointed area and just drawing out the side seam allowance so that I will know if there is enough space for the fourth panel. So I was cutting through, but I just remembered, as I said, I have to shape the lower side of the top. It has this V kind of thing down there. So I'll just take my ruler and then draw a V, a line to make the V shape over there. So you can make it more V as you wish. So now after that, I can then cut through my pattern pieces and cut out all the panels. Mm -hmm. 
So these are my pattern pieces. I would add allowances later. I'm just putting in my green lines. And let's move on to the back. I went uh, I went in also half of an inch and then made a straight line from the old dart and then mark the center of the new line and then make a new dart. Close the dart. And then at the armhole as we did for the front, I went down one inch and then marked the side seam allowance. And then I matched the side of the front to the back just to make sure the length is equal. Now draw the depth of your back and at the back also there would be lacing so I would take about two and a half inches, two to two and a half inches from the center back and then put in another panel to make the back panel three. So once I cut through the area with the that, the panels has are going to be three so now the back panel is done it's the easiest and I'm cutting it out I will then cut through the panels and at the that area you can just leave the that as your allowance or you can cut the that out and then add another allowance so these are all my pattern pieces I'm going to add allowance to them later on so this is the fabric I'll be using it's this very stretchy cotton fabric and you can see that the pattern really looks like this Regency or 18th century kind of fabric that is the vibe it gives I really love it it's a really um, thick fabric and I'll be using this as the lining these are all my pattern pieces laid here on my fabric and I put all the allowance straight on the fabric I use the pencil because I'm going to cut through those lines anyway so it's not going to be visible and even if it's going to be visible it's going to be lined so you can see and also at the center front there would be a same usually it's on fold but because I want to burn it, I want there to be a seam. And yeah, I'll be cutting two of each for the main fabric and also for the lining. So these are all my pieces that has been cut and I have fused in an interface into the lining pieces, all the lining pieces. So what I'm going to do next is to pin up everything, like how it has been lined up. So at this moment, I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and stitch all the areas that have been pinned. So this is how far I have come after stitching the seams. I went ahead and gave it a really nice press as you can see it's really looking nice right now so what I'm going to do next is to make channels for the boning so for the center front I want there to be two 
bonings over there so i will stitch very close to the edge of these seams to create the channel for the boning and for the rest of them i will trim the under under allowance and then flip this one over and stitch close to the hem to create the channel for the other boning so that is what i'm going to do only for the this piece not for this So if you use the, that as the allowance for the back, just cut through the center and then trim it to the size you want and then trim the other side of the allowance. So what I'm doing now is stitching or making the channels for the boning. Like I already said, I'm sewing close to the end of the allowance. What I'm going to do now is to face the lining with the main fabric and then stitch the center back only the center back so what i did to this was to trim off all the seam allowances of to reduce the bulkiness so i'll face them like this and stitch only the center back as i already so now this is how it's looking after stitching the center back and i made a top stitch on the lining fabric as you can see and also on the other side so now what I'm going to do now is to face the neckline and the armhole with the bias tape so I'm going to cut a bias tape out of this fabric I have extra fabric left so I'm going to cut it out of that and then I would face I will pipe the neckline and the armhole with this So you can make a basting stitch or stitch down the neckline to let it stay in place before attaching your bias tape. So what I'm doing now is to fold the bias tape into two and then at the wrong side of the top, I will just pin it like that along the neckline. Once I'm done doing that, I'll just stitch whatever allowance that I left, which was half of an inch. And then at this moment, I'll trim down the allowance. And then turn over the bias tape to the right side and stitch very close to the end. So that is how I'm applying my bias tape or that is how I'm finishing the neckline. So now the piping of the neckline and the armhole is done and this is how it's looking right now. Very neat and nice. This is how it looks from the inside. So what I'm going to do now is to insert the boning to all the channels that I made and this is the boning I'll be using it's a sew on bone but yeah this time I'm not going to sew on top I'm just going to insert it into the channels that I made so now the boning has been inserted you can see that it's really stiff around the places that it has been inserted and this is the side seam it doesn't have any boning I didn't want any boning at the side seam so that is the only places without no boning but all the other places with the channels have bonings and what I'm going to do now at the hem you can see that I have pinned them I'm going to use the zigzag stitch to finish finish it if you have a serger you can use it this is where the ruffle thing or the goddess thing is going to be this is because the ruffle is not going to finish the end or the hem of the top so i have to finish them separately as the ruffle is on top of the hem if you understand this i would insert a picture to show you exactly what i'm talking about so I'm finishing the hem with a zigzag stitch. You can use a serger or an overlocker if you have one. 
so what i'm doing now is measuring the length of the hem and then i would cut double of that for the goddess for the frill so for the frill i want the length to be three inches so i did cut double of that because i'll be folding it into two like that so that the lower side won't need any finishing or hemming or anything so i did run a garter stitch on the frill and then pull the size to create the fullness and then what i'm doing now is just pinning it to the hem on top So once you're done pinning, take it to your machine and stitch on top of it. So make sure you don't stitch on top of the boning. If you're using another type of boning, it could break your needle. So now this is done, I would take off the basin stitches for the goddess later and this is how it looks from the inside. So now what I have to do is to attach the straps and I'll be using this emerald green satin from leftover project so i'll cut the length or the size of the strap over there and then cut four of that so two for the back and two for the front so i went ahead and i and made my straps now i'm going to stitch it with my sewing machine and that is done so now that the straps have been fixed it's time to fix the eyelet and i'm thinking if i should use green or white but i think the white looks more better than the green one so i would use the white one so now the top is done the only thing left to do is to take off the basting stitches for the gathers and also to tuck this place down with a thread and needle if your machine can take it you can use your machine but i don't want to break any needle so i would use a thread and needle to stitch now with the modesty panel measure the width and length you would like and cut a fabric according to that so i did cut two fabric with the same width and length and I'll be applying an interfacing on only one. So once that is done, I will face right sides together and then stitch and then leave a little bit space to be able to flip it or turn it inside out. So once that is done, trim the corners and then trim down the allowance as well. So that once you flip it out, the edges won't be bulky because of the allowance. And it will make it lie really flat and nice. So I'll just nip those ends and then turn, the, turn it inside out and then use the scissors to push out the corners to make it really sharp and nice once that is done i will seal that hole over there and then my modesty panel is done so now the modesty panel is done and there are several ways you can wear it you can one way is to fix it or stitch it to one side of the top like this so it's kind of like permanent and another way is to just keep it like this and slip it at your back whilst once you're done lacing the back or when you get the fit that you want you can just put it there and then another way is to stitch on a ribbon here or a strap or a loop so that you can lace the middle part of the of the strap through it so if there is a loop here you lace this one through the loop so it's gonna be kind of floating so once you lace it and 
pull it it's going to stay in place so you decide on which one you want so now the corset is ready to be worn and let's see how it looks on i can't wait mm -hmm. 